Welcome, on behalf of the uh, New Fame Central School District and the New Fame Alumni Association, it is my honor to welcome you to the second annual New Fame Distinguished Alumni Ceremony. I am Lance Dickinson. Next slide, please. Where'd you go? Uh, chair of the Distinguished Alumni Selection Committee and a 1970 New Fame graduate. I would like to introduce a few special guests, including members of the Alumni Association in attendance today. Our current alumni president, Laura McFarland, from the class of 2006. Our first vice president, who I'm not sure has arrived yet, but she'll be here, Rachel Maziar's class of 2006. Our first uh, president of the association and one of your teachers, Ms. Jill Keyes, class of 2004. And board members, Tony Paulson, 1978. Michelle Phillips, 1997. We are also pleased to have the superintendent of schools, Dr. Lisa Kruger, class of 1994. High school principal, Dan Padet, that wishes he was a new fan grad. And board of education members, Melinda Bauer and Tony Casanelli are in attendance also. But most important, I am excited to welcome our distinguished alumni and their guests who we'll talk more about during the ceremony. But before we begin, Laura McFarland and Dr. Kruger. Will so we are really excited to be here today. Come back with me, come back with me. We're very excited to be here today inducting our second class of distinguished alumni. As many of you in the stands will be alumni in the coming years. Many of you volunteer with me and Mrs. Keys right now for your uh, uh, community service hours, so we appreciate many of you in the stands. I'd like to welcome everybody here today and just let you know that as you listen to the speeches that are coming up and hear the stories of the distinguished alumni here today, I want you to know that when you leave here, you have been given a great footprint in education to go forth into the world and do whatever it is that you want to do. And home will always support you. We will always be your biggest fans and champions, and we are proud of every single one of you sitting in the stands, and I hope you feel pride being a New Fame Panther. I will pass it back up to Dr. Kruger. Let's get a big applause. Good morning, students, faculty, staff, invited guests, and distinguished alum. I am equally proud to be your superintendent of schools and also a 1994 graduate of the New Fame Central Schools. Today, you're going to hear from amazingly talented and accomplished adults who, back in the day, roamed the halls of New Fame Senior High. Like me, our distinguished alum have gratitude for the solid educational foundation New Fame provided them. Each of our distinguished alum had impressive accomplishments, volunteer work in their community, dedicated service to their profession. Their stories are each unique and interesting, and yet their stories all have a very similar beginning. A beginning rooted here in the halls of New Fame. Today, our distinguished alum, I would like to thank you for returning to your alma mater to speak to our students today. Your accomplishments are inspiring, and they are inspiring to our students and to the faculty and staff who give tirelessly every day to the next generation who will become proud graduates of New Fame Senior High. Thank you, and go Panthers.
Now, I know uh, Mr. Farland tried to keep you guys' uh, spirit up a little bit. We know it's Spirit Week, the homecomings today. We know there's going to be a lot of trash talking during the part of put football game. But I have to let you know the king of trash talk is Dr. Pruger's class, the class in 1994. On social media, they talk trash, they think, and we as alumni, we're proud to, and we want to stick it up uh, for our class. But I'm going to challenge the class of 2024 to offer a challenge to the class of 1994 for whatever. It can be can jam, tip ball, corn hole. But I think for their 30th anniversary next spring, and when you guys are getting ready to graduate, throw a challenge out to the class of 1994. Uh, next slide, please. The Distinguished Alumni Award is to recognize new fame graduates who excelled at their careers, community service, or inspired those, the lives of others. Unfortunately, uh, three of our alumni were not able to attend, but they're here in spirit, and all three have provided videos for us. Our first inductee is Ronald Altbach. Next slide, please. Ron Altbach was a man of diverse talents and accomplishments. He was an unparalleled concert pianist, capital markets executive, entrepreneur, and songwriter. After graduating from Newfang in 1964, and talking about classes, the class in 1964 must have been very special. We had an inductee last year. We have two from the class of 64 this year. And Ron went on to Cornell University and graduated with a degree in music. He studied classical piano in Paris under Nadia Boulangers and co-founded the French-American rock band King Harvest, where he played the Wurlitzer electric piano on their 1973 hit, Dancing in the Moonlight. He later became a session keyboardist for the Beach Boys and co-wrote several songs with the group. Altbach was also a member of Celebration, a group led by Beach Boys co-founder Mike Love mainly composed of Beach Boys touring musicians. As co-founder of the publicly held Los Angeles-based media account film work, he served as executive producer of multiple feature films and television specials. He was vice chairman of Manhattan-based Rosecliff Capital in the 1990s and served as chairman of Paul Sebastian Fragrances. In 2008, he co-founded Regeneration Capital Group, an international merchant banking operation and is a founding shareholder and board member of Smart for Life. Most recently, Ron was a principal in MPF Infrastructure, a project development company primarily focused on water and power infrastructure across Africa and the Middle East. Ron played many benefit concerts and recitals in New York City, Los Angeles, and abroad, as well as the New Fane Orchid area. He passed away unexpectedly on February 21st of this year. Ron's family was not able to be here today, but with the help of King Harvest band member Rod Novak and his wife Ilka, they did produce a short video on Ron's life. Now, as we show this video, there are some captions, so I will try to read them because you, you might not be able to see the captions up above, but I don't want to take away from the music either.
Um, but I would personally like to thank his wife, Ilka, for her outstanding support for the ceremony and accept the award on behalf of the Altbach family. Our second distinguished alumni is Eric Harrington. Eric is here today with his wife, Aunt Andrea. Eric is a 1987 graduate of New Fane, where he was a two-sport athlete in baseball and basketball. He earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Science and Mathematics from SUNY Binghamton, where he also played on the baseball team for four years. After graduation from Binghamton, he worked for Barton Homes for eight years, then began work at General Motors in Lockport, which allowed him more time to be involved in a multitude of activities as a volunteer coach and leader. Most people know him as coach from his years as a volunteer in the Newfane Soccer Club, Lockport Travel Soccer, YMCA Youth Basketball, Town of Newfane Recreational Basketball, Town of Newfane Recreational Softball and Baseball, and Newfane Youth Football and Cheer. He has also coached modified boys basketball and varsity and junior varsity boys soccer at Newfane. Eric has been the president of the Newfane Soccer Club since 2011 and helped it grow to over 460 participants. He was also involved with Cub Scouts, Pac-40, and Troop 40 Boy Scouts. He's on the church council at Zion Lutheran Church. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Harrington. Good morning, everyone. I would like to start by congratulating my fellow inductees and thanking the New Fane Alumni Association and the New Fane Central School District for establishing the Distinguished Alumni Award here at New Fane. I am honored to be a recipient of this award. Many of you here in this gym know me as a coach. I was very fortunate to have been coached by four excellent coaches here at New Fane. I played JV and varsity baseball and basketball. My coaches were Dennis Seitz, Jim Conley, Dick Russell, and Larry Lesh. Over the years, they have combined for almost 150 years coaching experience. The passion they had for their sports and the caring they showed to the teams they coached left a big impression on me. I entered high school as an athlete that barely made the JV teams. And with their guidance and support, I improved my skills so that I, was, I had the opportunity to play four years of baseball at, at Binghamton University. They pushed me by making me work hard to be a better athlete and taught me life skills that have made me a better person. My love for, for sports continued after college where I was able to play nine years of baseball in the Suburban League and more than 20 years of basketball at the Lockport YMCA. The passion for sports began right here at this school because of the opportunities it offered, as well as the great coaches I had. These coaches gave me the courage and confidence to volunteer as a coach for my three kids when they became interested in sports, which eventually led to coaching soccer here at the school. Coaching has allowed me to share my passion for sports with the youth in the community, especially here at Newfane School. When I was in elementary and middle school, I looked forward to playing in the Town Recreation Baseball League we had here every year. It was a great way for me to improve my skills, but mostly to be around my friends. Because I enjoyed that so much as a kid, I wanted to be involved in making sure that the kids in our community had that opportunity as well. I was able to coach football through the Newfane Youth Football and Cheerleading, and have been involved in the Newfane Soccer Club for over 20 years. I believe that sports here in Newfane give the kids an opportunity to thrive in a different area other than academics and also bring the community together, as you'll see tonight, here tonight at the football game. I hope that I've been able to pass along some of my passion for sports to the kids that I've coached over the last 20 years. I'd like to thank my mom, Linda Harrington, for supporting my passion for sports by driving me to all my practices and being there for all my games. Also for being a role model, her generosity and kindness in the community has set a great example for me. Like my wife, Andrea, for helping me and supporting me whenever I needed it. And for my kids, Vicki, Aaron, and Brady, for allowing me to coach them 
It's not always easy to be the coach's kid. And for helping me at the New Thane Soccer Club, I've needed coaches and referees. Thank you, and go Panthers tonight. And we do have gifts for each of the uh, uh, distinguished alumni that we'll be giving to them uh, afterwards in the library. You students have probably seen the new alumni wall that we have. Their name will be on a plaque there, and then we're working to have individual plaques. So they'll get a chance to see that uh, later this morning. Here is David Nasca. David is represented today by his father, Sal Nasca. David Nasca is an accomplished artist and educator. Well, at Newfane, David contributed actively in the arts and language programs, including organizing student support and presenting to the Board of Education to maintain Newfane's French language programs. David sat on the Principal's Advisory Committee and was an elected member of the Student Senate. He was also the lead in several school musical productions. After graduation, David attended the prestigious Deep Springs College on a full scholarship. He completed his undergraduate studies at the University of Chicago with a Bachelor of Arts degree with honors in visual arts. In 2020, David was selected as one of only seven students to enter Cornell University's Master of Fine Arts uh, graduate degree program, which he completed in the spring of 2023. As an educator, David teaches sculpture at Chai Arts, the Chicago High School for the Arts, and this fall began teaching at Columbia College in Chicago. David has contributed to Chicago's artist community, including adding an advanced placement sculpture program at the Chicago School for the Arts. He also works with artists of all ages through various art education organizations, bringing contemporary art outside the white walls of the traditional gallery. In Chicago, he co-ran two DYI spaces and started a DYI program at Cornell bringing contemporary art to the near-abandoned Ithaca Mall. David's art has been shown in galleries across the country and internationally, earning him uh, several awards as well as two competitive artist residencies, one which was at the Corning Museum of Glass. Before Shell comes up here, we'll show a short video clip uh, from David's brother, Frank. Hello, my name is Frank Nasca, and I nominated my brother, David Nasca, for the New Thing Distinguished Alumni Award. Hello, my name is Frank Nasca, and I nominated my brother, David Nasca, for the New Fane Distinguished Alumni Award because all growing up throughout our time at New Fane, David was such a leader in the school community and in the greater community. I always looked up to my older brother and all of the excellent things that, <laughs> that he did for New Fane, for the school, and for the people that he cared about. David now um, has a career in arts and art education, and the seed of that really started at New Fane. And I remember especially during his eighth grade studio and art class with Mr. Tebow, David constructed a full leather suit of armor and a full, full life-size uh, mannequin model to display it on. And everybody in the school was so supportive of his creativity and his vision and his journey to that project. And so, I just wanted to send this video to have a few brief words of thanks on behalf of David and the Nasca family. Thank you, committee, for selecting David. Of course, I had a really prepared speech, but I know there's some things that David would like y'all to know. Uh, I think there are some things that David would all like you to know. Um, the possibilities in higher education are really endless in this country, and lots of big colleges have huge endowments um, that like students from places like Newfane. This community um, has raised and planted seeds in all of you um, that are valuable, that mean something to the community of these college campuses. So this day is really about you guys today. It's a celebration. Um, it's a celebration of your athletes and their academic um, 
lives and going forward. Um, the place Skate has made his way to Deep Springs College. Um, it was a unique place, and all of a sudden, all these big colleges around the country wanted a Deep Springer in their in their lot of of students. And this is what goes on all the time. And when we were parents, and David was writing essays for applications and things, we really let him fly on his own. And uh, and it, it worked out really quite well because there were a lot of people willing to pay his freight for college and we just had to take care of mortals and things like that. So really kind of um, a unique individual in, in many regards that's look beyond, I think, like lots of young people of uh, the world that's really out there. Um, the seeds that were planted here in New Fane, the teachers, um, the quality of of, of education, um, planted the seeds that that made them think bigger and having an opportunity to uh, leave the small community and get to other places. And I'd like to also just say, uh, my wife and I arrived at the community right when they were just born. Okay, and. Uh, we said, well, it's a really good school district, and the people were just wonderful and couldn't have been happier. It was everything our dreams were about, about raising the family here in the community, but not unlike young people, kids seem to want to get out of where they are and see a bigger part of the world, and it's possible. So to all of you, best wishes in your future. Go Panthers, athletes, do your best. Amen. <laughs> Our next inductee is Dr. Yak Rockfelt. Yak is here today with his wife, Christy, son, Yak Christian, and nephew, Andrew Lee, and niece, Cynthia Harvey. Yak arrived in Dufresne as an Estonian refugee who did not speak English. He finally remembers the great classes, good friends, and active participation in high school sports. After graduation, he attended SUNY Geneseo, receiving a Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology with a minor in sociology. He also has a master's degree in social work and philosophy from Syracuse University and a PhD in interdisciplinary social science from Syracuse. He was a postdoctoral fellow in clinical research at the Yale School of Medicine and a research scientist and clinician at Yale. Professor Rockfeld has over 50 publications in both English and Estonian and has maintained a private practice as a psychotherapist for decades. Dr. Rockfeld is an emeritus professor of social work in the College of Health and Human Services at Southern Connecticut State University in New Haven, Connecticut and has been an assistant clinical professor at the Yale University School of Medicine Department of Psychiatry. He currently provides training and clinical supervision for third-year medical students. For decades, Dr. Rackfeld has been actively involved with the Estonian diaspora community, fighting to restore Estonian independence, which occurred in 1991. After regaining freedom, he actively lobbied the White House and members of Congress leading to Estonian NATO membership in 2004. Last year, speaking in Estonian, he delivered a speech at the Estonian Parliament, strongly urging Parliament members to designate a National Day of Remembrance for the 80,000 Estonians who fled from the brutal, deadly, and violent Soviet occupation in September 1994. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Jak Raksel. Thank you, Lance, for that introduction. And also, I thank the selection committee and the members of the New Fane Alumni Association for this recognition. I'm truly humbled by it. I was born into an Estonian refugee enclave in Sweden at the end of the Second World War. My early years were filled with tales of atrocities 
and stories of loss and longing. I remember as a little boy, stretching tall to stare over the stone windowsill of our Stockholm apartment, imagining that I saw Russians attacking us. As a child, I drew maps depicting how I would lead the fight to liberate my homeland. We moved to the United States. I started school here in New Fame as a refugee, as an immigrant kid. I barely spoke English. On one of the first days of class, early on, while calling wool, the teacher said, Jack. No one responded. Silence. She repeated. Still no response. Kids began looking around. Finally, I stammered. My name is Jock. She leaned forward, pointed her finger at me, and said, in America, you are Jack. She was big, I was little. Others laughed. I capitulated. I became Jack until I left New Thing. This episode and other painful experiences during my early school years made me feel like an outsider, which fostered insecurity, shyness, awkwardness, and resentment. I never told anyone about these feelings. No one ever knew. My school years were relatively normal, though. I had friends. I played sports, attended school activities, dances, proms, and had fun. An epiphany occurred when my high school English teacher, Mr. Vogt, asked me to present a lesson, something I don't recall understood. My topic was Shakespeare's use of iambic pentameter. After working hard to prepare, I stood at the blackboard straight, tall, and with a full voice, loudly and boldly, I diagram Shakespeare's, when I do count the clock that tells the time, I was transformed. At that moment, I knew I wanted to be an academe. Despite such successes, I retained a chip on my shoulder from my painful early school days. In high school, my academic record was checkered. I did well when I applied myself and not when I didn't. I passed the courses by studying hard for the Regis test. This was my way of rebelling, thumbing my nose at the system, showing them I wasn't beholden to anyone. And then, during a meeting attended by my mother and me, a guidance counselor stated, you are not college material. My mother looked stunned. On her drive home, tears streamed down her face. At home, college applications lay on my desk. Now, it seemed no point in submitting any. Shortly after that meeting, while walking past the counseling office, the secretary waved to me 
asking me if I had registered for the Regan Scholarship exam. I hadn't. She added, you get out of class all day. I said, sign me up. I took the all-day test, and weeks later, the names of scholarship winners and alternates were read during a home room morning announcement. I was startled to hear my name. Others just stared at me in bewildered disbelief. That night, I sent my application to Geneseo and got accepted. At Geneseo, the dean told us to look to our left and to our right during freshman orientation. He ominously added that by the end of the year, only one of us would be left. These words seared through my heart. The statement, you are not college material, hauntingly resonated within. At New Fame, I had been inspired in many ways by Dr. John O. Hunter's wisdom. Organization is the key to success. During the first semester, my organized strategy was to take my books to a quiet carol behind the library stacks. I then hurried across the quad to the cafeteria to be first in line at 5 p.m. I wolfed down my dinner and quickly returned to the library, where I often studied until the chimes from the clock tower clarion marked closing time, 11 p.m. I did remarkably well. This led to a rich, fulfilling, and successful academic career. New fame provided an excellent foundation for my success. I had outstanding teachers from whom I learned course content as well as life lessons. Mr. Vogt, Mr. Kolbeck, Mrs. Clark, Mr. Hay, and Dr. Hunter. During Mr. Kolbeck's mechanical drawing class, he taught drafting while leading us guys through discussions on important issues facing young men. We learned how to tie a full Windsor knot. I felt like a real man after I had mastered this. Here's my Mr. Coquette's full Windsor knot. In addition to being an inspiring teacher and a great coach, Dr. Hunter drove a small group of us to the Albright Knox Art Museum, guiding us through a meaningful evening discussing and learning about the artworks. The annual varsity club game against the faculty stands out um, as a warm memory. The Newfane faculty always won because they had great players. As the first half, was ended. Fran Lapman, the star basketball and football player, brought the ball across half court. I ran toward our basket, waved my hands. Fran shot from way out. The ball clanged off the rim and bounced high to the side where I stood next to big, tall John Shavard the director of secondary education. We both jumped, grabbed the ball, and clung to it as we hit the floor. Somehow, I got the ball and instantly jumped back up. 
and shot. The ball swished through the hoop, nothing but net, right at the buzzer. My teammates marked me. The gym packed with students cheered wildly. We lost at the end. But the varsity club had its only lead by one point at halftime. This fond memory is only one of many wonderful war memories of my new fame, high school years. Looking now at this full gym packed with students, I suspect that along with the fond memories you're creating, many of you may also have some apprehension, uncertainty, and anxiety about the adult world that you face looming just ahead. You are not alone. It's also natural to avoid or to escape such unpleasant feelings. Instead, I urge you to embrace these often vital parts of yourselves. They may motivate you to do more and become more. In my own case, embracing my uncertainty motivated, activated me to work harder, leading me to achieve more than I could have imagined. I end with how my life's academic calling began. With I added potential. When I do count the clock that tells the time. In me resides a child still shy, displaced. who lingers still, though not in life's full grace. Thank you. Well, yeah, I think you are college material. Our next is Dr. He is Lisa Rutgers, who was also not able to attend today. Lisa is a 1981 graduate of New Fame and a graduate of St. Bonaventure University. She is co-founder and partner of Peterson Rutgers Group and has more than 30 years experience in higher education, strategy, marketing, public affairs, issues management, and leadership coaching. She has served as in-house counsel to seven university presidents. Lisa served as Assistant Vice President and Director of Public Relations at Michigan State University, Marketing Director and Director of News and Communication at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, and Account Executive at Media Logic, a marketing and public relations firm in Albany, New York. She then established her own counseling firm in 27, 2007, Lisa Rutgers and Associates, working with university presidents and other key leaders to develop strategic communication plans, including instructional positioning, messaging and branding, assessment of in-house communication, media relations, and issues management. Lisa then became the University of Michigan's Vice President for Global Communications and Strategic Initiatives. In that role, she was responsible for developing communication strategies to enhance Michigan's visibility locally, nationally, and internationally. She directed and managed the Global Communications Division, news, social media, photography, and presidential communications, as well as the university's top-rated public radio station, Michigan Radio. We will now play a short video from Lisa. Good morning, everyone. I'm Lisa Rogers, though my maiden name was Lisa Guido when I attended Newfane Elementary, Middle, and High School. 
I am so appreciative of this award today, and I want to start by thanking everyone from the school and from the Alumni Association who made it happen. My sister Gina and my brothers Joe and Rob also attended Newfane School System. And even though we all had and have very different learning styles, we all had the same experience in the school system. We were fortunate enough to have teachers and staff who supported us, who picked us up when we were down, who helped us learn and helped us grow. Many of those teachers and staff members became lifelong friends of our family along the way. I have spent most of my career working in higher education. For a long time, I was a senior leader at the University of Michigan, where I live now. Then a few years ago, I started my own company working with colleges and universities across the country. Every day I have the chance to see firsthand how important a solid educational foundation is, no matter what future path you might choose. The Newfane schools gave me and my family um, a really terrific educational foundation, as I know it has done for generations of students. There's something else I've learned as I've traveled the country. The Newfane community itself is a very special one, from the schools to your neighbors and friends to local businesses. People look out for one another and care for one another and understand a real sense of community in Newfane differently, I think, and more positively than some other places that I've seen in the country. It's a wonderful place to live. And even though I'm now a couple of states away, it's a wonderful place to call my hometown. I have one other comment today as I thank you again for this honor. For the teachers and the staff in the audience today, thanks so much for all you do to support these students. Your work is among the greatest gifts young people can receive. I see it, I appreciate it, and I admire you so much for the work that you do. I'm so sorry that I couldn't be there in person today, but I'm certainly there in spirit. And go Panthers. And it's my honor to accept the Distinguished Alumni Award for Lisa Rutgers. Our final inductee is Ron Winkley. After graduation from New Fane in 1976, Ron earned his associate's degree in criminal justice from Niagara Community College and a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from Rochester Institute of Technology. He then became a police officer in Middleton and Lewiston and then served as the first chief of police in Lewiston from 1984 to 2007. Ron was instrumental in merging the village and town of Lewiston Police Departments and forming a new consolidated police headquarters. Ron completed his master's degree in criminal justice administration from Niagara University and is the former graduate director of criminal justice administration at Niagara University and the academic liaison for the Niagara County Law Enhancement Enforcement Academy. Ron has also been an active community volunteer serving as a town of Lewiston councilman from 2008 to 2017 and a village of Lewiston trustee. He is past chairperson of the Niagara County Community College Foundation and has served as a New York State Safe Act panelist. Ladies and gentlemen, Ron Winkley. Thank you. I, I too would like to thank the alumni for uh, choosing me for this uh, distinguished award. Thank you very much. Uh, I was 47 years ago that I uh, was last in this auditorium. I, I like to joke, uh, I was in a class of 182, and I, I was number two in my class from the bottom. Uh, somebody had to be there. I, uh, I truly can only say that I am today because of Newfin. Uh, the teachers who I drove crazy, uh, they actually believed in me. Uh, the community where the sheriff used to chase me around uh, supported me. My friends, the people that you are sitting next to right now will always be your friends. Uh, keep them close, uh, lean on them when you have to, and always remember it's always good to come home and it's always a good place to do things. Thank you again.
This completes our ceremony today. Thank you all for attending, and I ask the students to take time today to talk to the uh, inductees, and they will be touring the school and observing your homecoming activities, and they'll be honored tonight at your homecoming game. Finally, congratulations to our newest distinguished alumni and Go Panthers, Pete Lakeshore.